support our students um, in their journey at UNCA, then it really wasn't enough. And there were three points that really stood out to us that we then tried and wanted to address um, in the pilot. So there was um, some data around engagement, motivation, and participation that was really interesting um, for us. And just to be clear, this is not the continuing student survey that we um, piloted in fall 2020. This was some uh, previous data um, that really showed how important it is to really understand our first year students. And so um, on average, our UNCS World students, you know, seem to participate in fewer activities around campus. They were less likely to have spent time with friends or even have one personal, uh, close personal friend. And there was already at that point in time, a bit of a feeling of isolation um, on campus. And so the other um, thing that we looked at or that stood out in the data was self-confidence and self-efficacy. And I'm actually really happy that Ali Elmbogen is in the is here because um, if there are any questions about the data, um, she will be able to give a lot more context uh, than I can do. And so what we saw here though was uh, that our first year students reported significantly lower self-perceived, and I think that's important, self-perceived abilities around emotional health, drive to achieve, leadership abilities, um, and the other lists um, that you see here in the, in the little blue rectangle. So um, that uh, was something you know we wanted to be aware of uh, in creating this pilot. And then the other thing that really stood out was the sense of belonging and community. And so there is this really interesting um, separation that our um, students feel like they belong at UNCA. There is a question on the on, on the survey that asks exactly that, and I say yes. Um, I feel like I belong at UNCA, but they don't report a sense of community. So that all started conversations about what can we do to address these um, challenges and how can we make sure, that was really the starting question, how can we make sure we have an actual first year experience, not just one seminar, in the fall, but a whole first year experience that has an academic anchor. Because of course there are all kinds of um, extra and co-curricular activities to support our first year students, but the academic anchor was something uh, we were wondering about. And so that led us to our next steps. Thanks Regina. Uh, so I just wanna kind of move from here to kind of the logistics in some ways. So in order to create kind of a first year experience that went across three courses, and we'll talk a little more about which, which courses there are and some of the, the pieces of that a little bit later, um, we wanted to create what we affectionately called pods, tripods, uh, so that these courses, we would get the instructors together. Of course, when we were planning this, pandemic had not hit, so we were actually planning to do this in person so that these classes were scheduled all at the same time and that they could meet with each other in person. But of course, the added layer then is we decided to go ahead with the pilot, even though everyone was going to be online. Uh, or with some hybrid components. So the online added uh, an interesting and very informative way for us to think about how to create connections across these three courses um, and to support some of the, the things we were seeing in the survey. I also wanted to add that we met with several student affairs people uh, to hear more about student experience on the ground around these issues of self-confidence and leadership abilities and emotional health. So we could kind of understand a little more about where the gaps were, what, what was disconnecting instead of connecting around those pieces. So there's been a lot of really helpful input along the way. Um, so our main goal was to create five pods, tripods um, across uh, basically first year courses that we've identified and that we wanted the instructors in those courses to focus on some of um, you know, certain goals. So to be able to create activities and assignments that would enhance uh, these goals along the way, but to give a lot of flexibility and freedom in terms of what those activities and assignments might look like. Uh, so goals are, as are on this uh, slide, 
um, to allow connections to uh, the learning outcomes, students be more aware of what the learning outcomes were and to enforce that not only within the class, but across the courses and what were the shared outcomes that began to emerge across those courses. Uh, we also wanted to see connections between students, student to students, peer to peer, um, as well as outside of the classroom, because the student surveys often say they are really connected to faculty. They see faculty as good resources, but don't always see other students as good resources. So we wanted to enhance that a bit and create those learning communities. Um, we also wanted to provide connection to liberal arts and ideas about the liberal arts, as well as context outside, including work environments, career paths, other ways that they could begin to transfer the knowledge, not only to other courses, but to other environments. Uh, and also, of course, to really understand and provide time for transition issues that weren't just in the first year seminar, but could be part of the other first year classes. And that's a culture shift to begin for those classes and those faculty to really see themselves as part of that transition work, even though I think some have already been doing that, but to intentionally attend to that across those three courses. So those are some of the, the goals we had. Um, I also just wanted to add that some of the student learning outcomes that we asked people to consider or that emerged out of the conversations of faculty across these courses, that people were really committed to asking productive, helping students ask productive questions, to pay attention to detail, uh, making the connections in the ways that I've elaborated on a bit, engaging in reflection as part of those connection uh, connections that they're making and to communicate effectively. So when we get to um, a little bit later, we can explain how some of the assignments uh, probably address some of these pieces, but just to kind of give you the overview, I'm gonna hand this over to Jessica now. Thank you, Kate. Um, so these are the three courses um, that kind of make up the academic core of the first year experience. Obviously, as Regina said, there are other elements of, of students' first year experience on campus, residential life, um, all, all sorts of things. Um, but this was kind of our focus for the pilot were these three courses, um, FYS 178, Ling 120, and Humanities 124. Um, these are classes that most first time first year students are going to take. Obviously, some come in with some AP credit, some come in with some transfer credit, but it's rare that a first time first year student is going to be exempt from all of these. So this seemed like a good place to start. Um, so um, since we started thinking about these as kind of the, the core academic first year experience courses, we've done a little bit of shifting in terms of just advising and talk the way we talk to students about these courses. Um, students are now allowed to take a first year seminar class uh, 178 in either fall or spring just to add a little bit of flexibility, a little bit more choice for students. Um, also, we recommend, uh, strongly <laughs> recommend, that they take at least one of these three courses in their first, their fall semester, their first year, um, so that they do have, as, Regi as uh, excuse me, as Kate was talking about, they do have a course that's going to help them with through some of those transitional issues and starting to build a sense of community on campus. Um, and then we also strongly recommend that they not take all three in one semester so that they do have that really first year experience, not just first semester experience, right? Um, while there's obviously specific content to each of these courses is very different, um, I think that each one of them has kind of intrinsic um, uh, introductory elements to them, right? Even, even before we started envisioning them or thinking of them as first year experience courses, um, FYS 178 is obviously an introduction to UNCA, to college life, helping students make that transition between high school and college, introducing campus resources, making sure students are familiar with those and comfortable with those. Lang 120 is really an introduction to college writing, right? Helping students understand that that 
um, five paragraph literary analysis essay they learned how to write in AP English may not be a one size fits all for all the different kinds of writing they're going to do on campus, biology, lab reports, right, grant writing and economics, whatever that looks like helping them start to make a shift to think about what's gonna be effective in what situations. And of course, also introducing them to the library, the writing center, the media design lab. And then of course, Humanities 124 as really an introduction to the liberal arts, right? And how we can take even texts that feel really academic and really removed from our lives and make connections between those texts and the decisions we make the, the pathways we pursue, our hopes and dreams for the future. Um, so lots of introductory elements in these three courses, I think that, that we're there anyway, and we're just kind of capitalizing on those. What a terrible word. Okay, I'm gonna turn it over to Regina now. That's a good word sometimes. And so just returning to what, what Kate alluded at and also what Jessica, you know, kind of came through in, in her description of the classes, our core theme when we when we decided to like, okay, how can we bring this all together? You know, what is the thing that we want to focus on, on the one hand to, you know, to really address our student needs. And that was really much, uh, you know, shaped as, as Kate Riley said, by our conversations with partners in student affairs. And then on the other hand, what is uh, already available in these classes? Because it was clear we cannot majorly shift, you know, what these classes are doing, how these classes are structured necessarily. So we kind of need to bring people, uh, you know, we kind of need to find a theme that allows us to, to do these things. And so our core theme then that we settled or that we, that we focused on was connectivity. And so we tried to think about all the ways uh, in which connectivity could play out, right? We wanted to ensure that um, in this pilot, we would focus on connection between uh, people, so between students, uh, but also, uh, you know, thinking about um, the relationship between faculty and students, even though that is one that is less, that seems to be less uh, a problem. Um, but mainly like how can we create uh, connections between students and of course then students in different classes, right? Not just the immediate class community, but all the students who are in one uh, pod. So um, connections between pathways, like how can they think uh, and see their way through this curriculum and how can they connect what they are doing now in a required class that they have to take to what they actually came here for, so to speak. Um, and that very much focused uh, around understanding um, how skills across classes connect and can be transferred. Like how can the instruction in writing that I get in Lang 20, Lang 120 help me write that reflection that I need to do in FYS 178? And how can my conversations uh, around, you know, transition issues or even like self-reflection, whatever you do in the FYS, how might that translate to understanding sources and activities in Humanities 124 and really going around, like really trying to articulate and think through as instructors, what skills transfer and how can we support our students in making this transfer? We wanna make sure that um, there's more connectivity between transition issues and academic skills, like really making sure how some of the transition um, challenges that students face are related to academic success or can be addressed with academic skills. So to make that connection clearer. And then uh, between what they are learning and transferring or what they're learning in these classes to transfer to other contexts. We realize and we know that, uh, for example, from data from our career center that our students, and now we, we saw it again in the continuing student survey that our students really um, struggle to articulate what they've learned. Um, and how that relates to skills that an, uh, employers are really looking for. Um, and so to support them early on to see like, this is what we're doing and this is the skill that you're developing. And this is why this is, um, you know, this is what this is gonna do long-term. And then of course, to um, strengthen connections around self-awareness. So why am I doing what I'm doing? You know, value exploration. What are my goals and my aims and how can I bring these things in alignment? You know, my work and my existence inside and outside of the classroom on and off campus. I'm wondering um, if we should give some samples here before we go into the assessment, I think. Um, mm -hmm. So for example, um, both Jessica and Regina were part of a pod. So I'll let you all speak to what went on within your pod, but 
In some other pods, we had some assignments built in. Of course, these were created by the faculty directly in terms of what they thought would work in their courses um, and across courses. So some engaged in um, a letter writing, a physical mailing of letters between students that they conducted throughout the semester. So we had, um, that was probably one of our most successful of the assignments in part because we realized with the isolation piece to receive a physical piece of mail, which many of our students may have never encountered in their life, let alone a stamp, um, was really something that, that created um, the impact of connection to other students across courses, um, even if they were in online environments. And there were prompts for the letters. There were connections that were related to the goals around what students were asked to write about to each other. Uh, and so that was one of the types of assignments that got kind of embedded in a class. So um, Jessica and Regina, do you wanna share maybe another sample or so? Well, I guess one important thing to say is that we, um, one of the expectations of each tripod, right? So it's a, a tripod is a class of 178, a class of 120, and a class of, of 124, right? You may use 124. Um, not the same students, different students, right? So they're making connections. Um, and the idea, the expectation was that there would be three shared experiences, right? Um, that there would be kind of three touch points throughout the semester when they, when students would um, would connect with each other in some ways. Um, and yeah, the the I mean, from from the feedback we heard from faculty, the the actual physical letter letter writing was was really a hit. Students really loved it and really got excited about it. Um, we did ours through. Um, uh, through more online means, we did a story, two story core interviews, um, but I'll let Regina talk more about that. And I think from, from the student feedback that we got, that was a quite successful um, interaction, even though the technology portion was a little bit challenging at times, but we checked in, in in all of our classes. And so the first interview happened during the second week of classes already. And the um, the second interview, I think, was the second to last class. And so during that first um, first interview where they really were connected, I mean, we assigned the groups and, and they know they had a designated time when they can get this work done and they had a prompt to work on. But they really met people, you know, that they, they never interacted with before. And it was really interesting to hear students say, like, you know, it was really good to see um, that other students feel the same, you know, like that first year students are really like we're going to similar ways. So it was really exciting to, you know, see all the connections uh, I have with somebody I never met before. And so or, you know, some people felt really encouraged by, you know, we just started talking with each other and it felt so uh, good to see that I can start up a conversation with a stranger. We know one group for sure, you know, that continued and went out for lunch afterwards and stayed continued. Uh, between interviews, so I think this really sparked um, a lot of a lot of connectivity, exactly the way we imagined it. Yeah, and then our in our tripod, our middle experience was on a website. We had a shared website for the three classes, and students were kind of asked to look over and comment on each kind of work in progress, works in progress that each of those students in different classes were working on, and. There again, I think um, one of the most successful, just thinking back to the comments that I read, the student comments, um, the students really loved um, Regina's students writing in 178, where they talked about being college students during a pandemic. Um, and the students were um, just the experiences that they shared um, about, oh my gosh, I feel the same way. And yes, I can totally relate. Um, those, those, while they were not kind of in person and, and synchronous, like the, um, like the story core interview, I think those were really powerful too. Um, at least reading them, they, they, they felt really meaningful. So hopefully that gives folks some ideas of some of the assignments and activities and, and when we get to the Q and A part here in just a moment, um, if there are other folks in the room, I can't see everyone at the moment that want to chip in about other activities and assignments, or we can we can give more detail about that then. So we're actually in a process of assessing, like we, we've been working on assessing the pilot 
And I see that, I do see that Ali and Amanda are here. So if I'm off in any way or you want to contribute, please do add to um, what I will introduce here is that uh, I believe it's the current, the most recent student survey that was given across all the, as many first year students, whether they were in the pilot or not, that we included some components related to self-perception of dispositions to track and see self-confidence levels and, and other aspects that we had heard about in the previous survey, as well as the student affairs uh, folks. Uh, so that survey, we could pull out the pilot um, kind of pieces to see if there's any significant statistical differences, if you were in a pilot or not a pilot pod. Um, and so I'll let the results, I'll let someone else uh, here reveal, but just so you know, there's the dispositions piece. And then the second piece was really looking at some of those student learning outcomes, uh, in particular related to productive questions and making connections and Amanda um, has created a, a rubric that Jessica and I have been kind of testing out and Amanda as well, just testing out and refining because we pulled, um, not we, the Royal, we pulled, <laughs> I think that's Amanda and Ali pulled the um, assignments from the pilot classes as well as maybe other classes too, I'm not positive about that, to be able to also kind of track those learning outcomes more concretely. So um, the rubric is still uh, kind of being fine tuned, but we're getting close and can do that leg of the work. But we have seen based on the survey, um, kind of comparisons between the pilot and the non-pilot first year students, some really encouraging results. So I'm gonna hand that over to the grand reveal at the moment. Um, so yes, as um, as Kate was saying, so there's the two parts, the assessment, the survey, and then also these these student writings, mostly kind of reflective writings that we collected. Those have still yet to be analyzed. As Kate said, we're, we're um, Amanda's working on the rubric for that, and that hopefully will happen sometime later this semester. Um, but um, but yeah, we've we've got some preliminary results from the survey. And so this is taking um, the non-pilot students, students who are not in a pilot group and comparing it with the students who were in the pilot group. Um, the pilot students were more likely to believe that their learning was very important to their professors. Um, pilot students were more likely to have at least one close friend at UNC Asheville with whom they could talk about important things. Um, and pilot students had a, a stronger self-perception of their physical health and social self-confidence. Um, so really, really um, exciting and promising um, preliminary results. Um, I think the one area where we did not see the positive difference um, was in the making connections kind of between their ac things they were learning academically in other classes or their uh, things they were learning um, in their lives. Um, but I think we're hopeful that when we start to analyze some of these actual student writings, right, some of the student sample, um, we're hoping that maybe um, we have a better idea of at least of why that is, right? Um, um, or, or maybe they actually are able to do things in a, in a reflective, um, in a, right, in a narrative way that they weren't necessarily able to capture in a in a survey, right? So, so we're hoping that that helps us to kind of make more sense of that kind of one piece that that seems to be missing. And that is, um, and that's that's kind of our a quick summary of this pilot. So I think we'd we'd just love to hear from you now. What are your thoughts? Your suggestions? Your questions? Um, I, I guess I should say, or somebody should say that um, we, because we don't have fully, um, you know, we haven't finalized our assessment, it seems to be working. Um, we're planning to go ahead with it in the fall of 2021. Um, and we feel like it at least deserves to be run one more time, um, especially one time when maybe things are back to a little bit more normal than they were in the fall. Um, so, um, it does look yeah. like Ali has a question or wants to jump in. Um, I just wanted to add to the um, assessment piece of this that 
we will be doing this continuing student survey on an annual basis and we'll be able to look at students as they progress. So some it, we might see, a, it's just a hypothesis, we'll see if it turns out to be a true, not, true or not, we might see some students who report even more gains into the future, you know, participants of the pilot this year, maybe some of those connections, for instance, that Jessica was talking about aren't showing up immediately, but then perhaps when they're into their sophomore year, we see differences there as compared to students who didn't participate. So that is something that we'll be continuing to study in the future. Thank you. Thank you. Can I just add one more thing about the data? Please do. I don't want to overplay Jessica's comment about the connections. I think from a measurement standpoint, the stuff you don't care about, but um, the data that we have on connections is very different than the data that we have on everything else. So it's less likely that we'll be able to, to make conclusions off of the data that we had on just the, the pilot classes and the first year experience classes. So I think the fact that we're able to do something related to connections, I'm sorry about the background noise, um, something about connections amidst the questions that were asked of everyone tells us more strongly that there is something, right? So the questions that we asked of the just the pilot are, there's less data there that we can pull from. So I, I think that that can be kind of under, oh, like not paid as much attention to, if that makes sense. With regard to um, Jordan's question, you know, I think Jordan, uh, you play a good part in this uh, because, you know, we're, we're sending out the materials that you have created um, to the 178s. And that's something that's, um, you know, um, really encouraged in the, in the uh, faculty development for the 178s. And so I don't know why in the pilot that is stronger, that I don't, I really don't, don't know exactly what the connection is. Maybe there was more intentionality about, you know, because there was additional training, like there was, you know, there's, there's training for all instructors teaching the 178, but then we had additional and, and, and more comprehensive training for people in the pilot, just because we needed to support and facilitate some other conversations. And so I think there was some other engagement around what do our first year students need, you know, and what might be areas of um, where they where they need um, particular support, and how is you know self care and physical health connected to academic success, and and so why that is also a little bit part of the the 178 general professional development, and we share your materials with every 178 instructor in general. Maybe there was just some more intentionality in those classes around. Okay, what can we do to to provide support? That would just be a guess at this point. Yes, so we had students who were in all three pots, and and uh, you know because in the end, in the end, it's a it's a scheduling thing, and so whenever we, you, you you could end up in three different pots because no, you couldn't end up in three different pots because nobody should have been in three um, in all three classes. We try to nip that in the bud. So, um, but some people were in two different pots. You know, and that can, um, we, I don't think we had enough people to see if there's any, you know, like the more pot, the better, so to speak. Um, but um, that definitely happened. And it didn't seem to be for a moment, we were concerned maybe that it's too much, you know, will the students have too much engagement, so to speak, uh, in the sense of like, because there was extra work, right? I mean, and ideally it would have been integrated, but we also know that wasn't necessarily happening in all classes. So there was a moment of a concern where like, wow, if we are on two parts, you know, is this just like too much push towards connection where students are turning off, but we didn't really see that. So we didn't have anybody complain and be like, wow, you know, all this work. And we encouraged instructors to be really transparent about, okay, this is what we're doing and this is what you're part of, you know, and this is why this is integrated in our class or this is why, we're doing this activity. And so, um, yeah, no, we have no data yet in one way or another. So if two is better or worse, we, we don't know. It didn't seem to hurt anybody. So the, the pod faculty, um, we brought everyone together at multiple times over the summer um, to plan together. Um, 
um, I think there was kind of an, maybe an initial meeting, maybe in June, you guys helped me remember another one um, to finalize plans in August. And I'm sure that most faculty were in communication with each other between June and August. Um, but those were kind of the times that we brought everyone together. And then we also brought everyone in uh, all the faculty teaching in the pilot together um, twice over the semester as well. Once kind of at the middle of the semester to kind of just check in with each other um, and, and see how everything was going. And then toward the end of the semester as well. And those were opportunities to kind of troubleshoot um, problems that they were having or check in with their pod members to, to, you know, sometimes we get busy in the midst of the semester and it's hard to find that time. And so it was, I think it was really helpful to have those moments of check-in. I don't know if you try to unmute yourself, Kate, so I'm, I'm waiting if you want to say something. Okay, so yeah, um, the the faculty workshops that we had, I think were really, were really powerful because uh, during the first one, we first connected everybody who's teaching the same class to think about, okay, what could be, you know, like what could be points of commonality and connection. Then we started to connect people in their pods, so they had to think about connections between those three different classes. And then we really um, try to provide scaffolding and support to say, okay, you know, now you have to like, please come up with a, with, um, you know, a plan what you're gonna do over the next couple of weeks. And, and um, Jessica, Kate and I provided some feedback on that. And then there was a deadline to provide, okay, this is the plan we have for this semester. And we brought people to back together at that point so they could share out some ideas. So we tried to, to really support that people can like cross inspire each other between their pods, you know, and, and I think there was really some, uh, some excitement. And it was interesting though, how in how many different directions the individual pods took the idea of connectivity, you know, productive questions, effective communication, these learning outcomes. That was really interesting. Um, to see and the check-ins then once classes were on their way, I think was really, were really helpful as well. Yeah. But in the beginning, Kate, I think, by me, I think in the beginning, we just looked like, who is interested in being in the pilot? When are these people teaching? Because it's all about in the beginning, you know, it's like, like you have to juggle logistics and, and, and people in a way. So we were trying to figure out who wants to participate, who could match up with each other. And you know where do we need to recruit people? Because we didn't have five pods together when we started, so we really started then to reach out to people and to pitch this idea of, hey, you know, would you be interested in in participating? Yeah. So I think um, Regina, you've sent out an email to invite for the fall, so that we know who might be interested. So um, if there's folks in the room, or you want to tell your colleagues, please do, because we'd like to get some new folks in the room so that we can expand on who, who's involved in the pilot. Um, I also wanna say that I think Regina, you put together a kind of a Moodle page that had some modules and that included some readings and resources around inclusive pedagogies, how to create online communities and just certain kinds of support resources as people were building assignments and activities to remind themselves of everyone who's in the room that's gonna be in the, the virtual room at the moment that um, those assignments should attend to and, and think about a little more deeply. Um, so yeah, that's what I wanted to add. And Tracy, I don't know if we, um, actually maybe this is a question for Amanda. Do we have samples of, wait, do we have samples of letters that were copied? Cause I know students had to take a snapshot, a picture of letters before they sent so that in case the letter never got to the other person, there would be a letter, but it also got sent to the faculty. So I'm imagining we do have some samples of that. Yeah, I think we have samples. And then from what I understand, uh, the, the way this was um, shared, I think it was not gender specific other than, uh, I mean, I guess it's a gender, a, a letter is a genre in itself. So that was just, you know, send a letter to a fellow student. It was on a specific prompt. Um, and then I don't know if the student who received the letter was, um, you know, if there was a response expected, if there was part of an exchange of it was maybe more of a, of a one way um but yes i think it was more it was more informally really really focused about connecting students well and before we get to melissa's question i'd also say connecting faculty because mm -hmm. we're all feeling a little isolated or some of us are and so i think we never assess the faculty connection part but to have three people working closely together across classes i think <laughs> enhanced some um, relation. Yeah, and 
And I guess I just want to say that when we envisioned this in the beginning, we didn't know we were going to be online, right? Um, and so the issues of community and belonging or the, the concerns about community and belonging were, were pre-COVID. Um, and so that just put a whole nother element to this. And there was a moment where we said, okay, everyone's transitioning online. Do we, do we even need to continue with this? This is added work for everyone. And I think our collective answer, and Regina and Kate, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but our collective answer was, actually it's gonna be even more important um, in fall of 2021 um, because of um, that, that need to connect is gonna be even more, even stronger, right? Um, and so finding ways to do that online um, are seemed really important. Um, and so part of my you know, response or my, my first initial response to Melissa's question about what are we gonna do differently next semester, I'd love to imagine that there might be an opportunity for, for some kind of in-person shared experiences. Now, I don't know, um, who knows what the future will hold, but I'd, I'd love to think that that might be a possibility. I also think that um, the first two readers are gonna be on the ground and in use. And I see Chelsea's in the room here. Chelsea and David from the Career Center developed questions for 20 to 25% of each of the volumes readers related to um, something that emerged out of the reading that might connect to thinking about a work environment or a career context, um, you know, kind of values and dispositions around being a colleague somewhere. So those questions will be available and could end up boosting some of the that piece of the connections to outside of classroom dynamics. So that may be something that would be a little bit different next year. And I think overall um, in, in our faculty support and faculty development, I think we're gonna try to really encourage thinking about integrating this work. I think that's what we have seen um, in the parts where, where people were most able to integrate um, you know, these assignments instead of, instead of feeling like, okay, I kind of need to cover all of this and now I'm adding this so I can attend to this issue. That seemed to, it also worked, but it seems to work a lot better the more integrated it is and build into the flow of the class and the assessment. So I think that's something we're gonna encourage more and try to support faculty more to do that for all three classes. That kind of connects with another question in the chat about whether there was a, if, if all the, if the three classes in the pod were supposed to have a shared theme, they weren't. Um, the way they, it was up to each pod how they wanted to structure those shared experiences, right? So you've heard about one pod doing physical letters, our pod did story core interviews and kind of um, commenting through website. Another pod did shared readings um, and kind of like shared reading response forums. Um, so, so it was really up to each, um, each group, how how they, you know, where they, how they saw that commonality. But I don't think that any of them changed their theme for their course to to kind of align with any of the other ones. And they just found shared elements that were already existing in their courses and tried to integrate that. Um, yeah. Um, I want to try to catch where we where we are. Um, if we were to take what you've learned and apply it to another area, what key takeaways would you propose? And man, this is such a very difficult question. I don't even know why I read it out loud. Now I feel like I need to answer it. <laughs> Does anybody want to take a first step at it? I think I think if like on a very superficial on a very superficial level, I think the intentionality and in thinking about connections and how to articulate those, those connections between people, like whatever, whichever area of connections we take, I think that is one thing that I could see playing out in, in other, um, you know, for example, in a sophomore experience as well. And then um, I think in our planning, the conversations with student affairs and really thinking holistically about the students we're trying to serve, 
um, and, and connecting with our partners there and be like, okay, what are you seeing? What are we seeing? Like, how can our work intersect? And, and really making sure that they were aware and on board um, of this process early on, I think that really, really improved uh, the pilot overall, just because we had a fuller picture of what's going on with students, where are the gaps and where could this, you know, what kind of gaps um, could this pilot, could this pilot address? So I think the intentionality and really thinking about, I mean, I think for every one of our class, class groups, right? What is the transition they're experiencing and what can we do in the academic realm to address that transition moment? I think that's something that I'm seeing a lot of potential for. Did I pass? I think so. Okay. I would so, just, oh, oh, go so ahead, Jessica. Um, no, I would just also add that I think that it's important to think about why sophomores specifically are feeling unconnected, right? And it's because the first year experience is over that kind of, you know, the little added support, nurturing. We think of first year students, they need that. And then they're not quite connected with their major yet, right? And so I think identifying the root causes for that feel, those feelings of disconnect can help us to address the sophomore experience. It's going to look different than I think the, the solution for the first year experience, right? But it, but it's, but I think that what we've learned from this can help us identify what the real problem is in other areas. Um, were you going to address Kirk's question, Kate? I was going to give a give a start to that. So um, I think in terms of the um, vertical integration work that started happening in the humanities program, um, I want to give a shout out to Jake, who led a block grant that I think Lindy and a few others were part of to think through what are the connections across the humanities courses as they were at the time. Um, actually um, kind of steered us towards really being attentive to skills rather than just the content that was happening across the courses. And so that's actually informed this notion of the horizontal in terms of 124, 120, and 178s is if we're thinking about productive questions, right? That's already shifted a lot of the curriculum work that's gone on within that as well as other courses. And so this kind of integration, um, I think, has been a little more organic in some ways. I also think because 120, you know, 178s just got everything piled on top of them. So to be able to spread some of that work around a little more um, and be able to share best practices around that has been helpful. Um, also, 124 doesn't have a common lecture hour anymore at the moment which means that there was more time given back to the classes to be attentive to these kinds of assignments and hands-on activities was something that, you know, I kind of see a lot of this pilot work, including hands-on activities, even if they're online or virtual. So in some ways it, it actually aligns well. And I don't think it's an overload. In fact, the faculty from 124 found it really enhanced the types of things they were doing as long as they were able to embed the activities as naturally as possible, right? And I think that takes time and practice sometimes, and that's why we want to run the pilot again. Um, but I would say that all these pieces are kind of interacting with each other, so. And just to add to that, uh, from my conversation um, with the Humanities 124 instructors that I um, had a couple of weeks ago, I think we're now like starting different convers uh, or additional conversations around what does it mean for Humanities 124 to understand itself as a first year experience class, right? I'm gonna have another conversation with the Lang 120 faculty, right? What does it mean? Like how much does it really change the class? How much is already there? And is the change, and, and I think, you know, in many ways that's a change that has very little to do with content and a lot to do with organization and structure. So that doesn't feel like, like overloading, that really feels like shifting and, and refocusing. Um, a few things. And I think there's also, you know, a benefit of really emphasizing this as the academic first year experience. So we have mainly first year students taking Humanities 124. So it really can be, you know, a class that along uh, Lang 120 and the FYS is setting the stage for them um, as they move forward through the curriculum. So that was, um, that was really encouraging. And I look forward to the conversations I'll, I'll continue to have with the faculty in Humanities 124 and Lang 120. Yeah, and, and I think that, you know, 
it's definitely shifting the way that we think about these courses, but I think it's an important shift. I think it's a necessary shift. I think we need to support our students where they are. Um, if we're admitting them to the university, um, we need to we need to make sure that they have all the resources to succeed um, if possible. Um, I wanted to just say, Judy, that I have, have, have wondered the same <laughs> in terms of your question about, um, Judy says regarding the conclusion about the pilot mm -hmm. students more likely to feel that their instructors cared about their learning. Can you tease out whether that's related to the pod experience more the faculty development? Seems like faculty volunteer for this and undergo the faculty development might be more likely um, to be over about the student, about this with the students. Yeah, I've definitely wondered that as well. Um, I will just, I think I tell my, I, I think I, I'm trying to tell myself that it's very much the faculty development. Um, so, you know, like that's just because that makes me feel really good. Um, but I also think there's something to it because I think we've tried to, to have more conversations about what does care look like? Because that's usually something we, we shy away, away from, right? Like this is a classroom and it's rigorous. And so, you know, um, uh, Renu Kakusain and I ran a workshop um, last summer about, okay, what does care and rigor, how do these things really connect, right? They're not mutually exclusive, but they're very much connected to each other. So in the classroom, what does care look like? How do you communicate care? You know, care is an assignment that is accessible to student, is intentional scaffolding that makes sense, is allowing students to be able to understand where this class is going and what will be expected of them four weeks out and not just posting the reading the week before. It's, it's really things like that, right? Care is no, walking into a classroom and noticing like everybody is on edge and really not ready to learn and to pause and to open up a space. And I think this is more and more important. And I think we're having more conversations about what care even looks like in the classroom and very much with the pod groups, very much more with the 178 instructors. So I think that definitely has an impact there. But also then, you know, I think faculty who self-select themselves to participate in these initiatives. And, you know, I think we at least wanna briefly mentioned the significant number of contingent faculty who decided to participate in this work and to be like, yes, a pilot to serve our students, let's do it. So that was very clearly um, visible in this, in this pilot as well. I also want to thank the NEH CARES fund that Melissa helped procure um, because that helped to support this work for the pilot. Um, because especially it was online, but it was also that intersection of people teaching in humanities related classes, including, of course, the Lang 120 and the FYSs with some um, flexibility, right? We had a few folks in there who would have been technically in a social science or natural science, but not like the, the mass was from humanities based disciplines. So thank you, Melissa, for getting that money for us. Another way that CARES was really helpful in this whole undertaking. <laughs> Well, and, and, and I think back to what Regina was saying about, you know, was it the faculty development, et cetera, yet again, this is a pilot. So the idea here is that we take what we learn from this and, and make sure that whatever it is students are getting through this pilot experience, if, if it's beneficial, that all of our first year students have access to, to, to whatever that is, right? Whatever, whatever it seems like it is that's helpful. And, and yet again, what we're talking about here is, is, is a bit of a culture shift, right? Um, a shift toward um, rigor that is combined with care um, as Regina so lovely um, and succinctly put it. And I just want to echo like Lindy's comment. If you are not able to join the uh, learning circle on re uh, relationship bridge education, um, you know, like you should definitely consider getting the book. Maybe somebody can put a quick link in there because it is uh, blowing my mind in every possible way. And, you know, I have a running list of 15, <laughs> 15 things that we need to be doing immediately. Uh, but, you know, just really, I think this is really helpful for our for shifting the ways we want to envision this campus. And clearly we are in a place where there's room and desire and, and need for thinking what we want UNCA to be like and to feel like uh, for students. So this book has been really, really helpful in that regard. Thanks, Jordan, I really appreciate that. 
we could have time for one more question or we can gift you six minutes to stretch and eat some more lunch and drink some more water before you have to go teach. <laughs> I just wanted to say thanks for taking the time to share this with us. I mean, it, it's often the case that, you know, we don't even hear about some of these cool things that are being done. So I'm just really glad you were willing to, to talk about it. And also Amanda to, for the Amanda and Ellie, Ellie for your help in assessing it. I think that's all just really wonderful to hear about. <clears throat> Thank you so much. And again, you know, if you are teaching one of these classes next semester and you are interested in participating in the pilot, please let me know. I'm, I'm having a running list and I think Jessica and Kate and I will get together pretty soon to see, you know, well, we can make work once again, juggling logistics and people. All right. Thank you, everybody. Have a good afternoon. Thanks. Bye. Bye. The teach at 120, but thanks you all. And thanks, Jean, for letting us uh, jump in on this. The time timing's good because we're gathering the next yes. round. So thank you for that. Yeah, the timing was perfect. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you all for doing this. Uh, very cool. Stay safe here.